Hello, this is Logan Murphy, and today we're going to learn how to set up a PHP environment in either Windows 7 or Windows 8. So, the first thing you want to do is go to the control panel. This can be done by pressing the start key and just going directly to it. Uh, press start and you can type in control panel and click on the control panel. Next you want to go to programs and turn Windows features on or off. Then you're going to have to wait a few moments for this to load. While we're waiting for this to load, let's go to a web browser. First thing you want to download is Java. And you just have to go to the website. Any links um, that I am showing you here today will be under this video, so all you have to do is click on them. Uh, run this until this is completed. Next, you want to go to PHP and you want to download a zipped version of the non thread safe PHP. And we'll take a look back here. So, we need to turn on certain Windows features for IIS. Uh, for Windows 7, I'm not entirely sure what your options are, but it should be fairly similar. You want to enable the IIS Management Console of the Web Management Tools of the Internet Information Services. You want to enable these three, and you want to go into here, enable CGI, and go into here, default document, directory browsing, and static content. Okay. So after you press OK, it'll actually ask you to restart your computer. Uh, make sure you've completed any downloads up to this point, and close all your windows, and then restart your computer. When you reboot, uh, your computer will enable these features. Okay, I've already done this. So, you will notice on in your C drive, when you reload your computer, you'll notice in the C drive that there's this folder called INAP pub. Uh, if you have that and WW root, then you did it correct. Okay. So, back to PHP. Once you have PHP downloaded, it's going to be in a folder that looks something like this on the inside. You want to take all this content, and this folder right here has all that content in it. The exact same content. Okay? I just call this folder PHP. It just makes sense. It goes directly in the uh, C drive. Once you have moved everything, scroll all the way down, and you're going to look for PHP any development. You want to make a copy of this, and it'll say PHP copy, and you want to rename this PHP any php.ini which I have already done and that is right here uh, it should look something like this for the file icon so you want to edit it and it's going to be just a bunch of text you want to press control F which will bring up a search function function and you want to search for my SQL I and it'll bring you down to a bunch of things with a DLL at the end of it and they'll, for you, there'll be semicolons in front of these two things just remove those two semicolons, save this file and then you can close it okay so PHP is set up now and pretty much ready for you to use next thing you want to do is press the start key and type INETMGR INET manager and then click this that comes up and when you do that you'll see a screen like this and you'll have all of these options and the thing you want to choose is handler mappings double click it and you want to choose add module mapping 
and the request path is star.php. The module is fast CGI module, the executable. You want to go to your C drive PHP folder and you want to switch this option to .exe and you want to choose a PHP CGI.exe and you can just name it. Uh, I like to name it PHP via fast CGI. And since I've already done this, I'm going to click cancel, but you should press OK. And you should see it appear in here. After you've done that, click on this globe again. And default document, you want to go into that. You want to add, right click on this area, or click on this add button. And you want to click you want to type in index.php and that will add index.php here uh, you just have to press ok, I press cancel because I've already done it and you want to move it to the very very top so that when someone browses to your website and they don't type a URL or they don't type a document it'll automatically open these the documents in whichever order you specify and uh, you want this one to be first Okay. Next, back to downloads. Um, you want to download Eclipse for PHP developers. You want to either open the 32 or 64 bit, whichever, or Mac, whatever applies to you. Um, just open it and uh, extract everything. I've extracted it all to the desktop. This is what it looks like for me. Next, you want to get MySQL. You scroll down to the bottom and say no thanks, uh, start my download uh, for this. And you're also going to get the Secula database, which I'll just give you this link directly. You won't even see this page. You'll just click this link and you'll get a zip download. And just download that zip. Okay. So, those are all the downloads you really need for doing PHP. Uh, something to keep in mind, when you install MySQL, it will ask you for a password. Just set the password to be root. R-O-O-T. Root. Uh, like a plant. And, okay, so we're going to do a test. You should test, see if localhost actually uh, localhost colon 80 gives you a result so right now your page won't look like this in order to get your page to look like this we're going to go into Eclipse so this folder I'm going to go into it and to open Eclipse you just double click the e exe for Eclipse and it'll open up and it'll ask you it's going to ask you what what would you like your um, the root to be uh, of your of of your project or um, so you're going to choose when the window comes up go to computer or go to C drive go to inet pub and choose www root as your root folder for projects um, something that's kind of annoying. Uh, when you run Eclipse, uh, you should right-click it and run it as an administer. So this kind of requires administer access uh, because you're going to be accessing files in a secure location. Uh, so uh, you need administer permission to do that, and you need to run this as an administer. Okay, so when you first open, you're going to have something that looks like this. So go to File, New, PHP Project, and we're going to call it Sakilla. Um, which I've already done this, so I don't I don't need to do it again. Um, and you want to enable the JavaScript support. Um, so let me just open my uh, let me just make it. Um, so I'll close this. 
So, yeah, I don't need this. Expand the Sequila, and you want to right click it, New PHP File, and you just gotta wait a moment. Type index.php, press finish, and it'll create a PHP file. And type echo hello world in there. Save it. So, let's go back to iNetPub, go to www.root, and delete that. So the first time you load this, there's going to be a whole bunch of junk in here. Um, not even sure what this really is. Probably important though. Um, some of it you can delete, but I wouldn't recommend it if you don't know what to delete. But anyway, um, so when we type localhost, it actually takes us to this www root. So if we type localhost slash sakilla, it will take us to the Sequila folder and it will run the index.php folder so if you have this same thing in yours then you'll see hello world come up over here okay so next thing we downloaded this Sequila database and the inside of it should look something like this so while you were downloading MySQL uh, you should have downloaded also MySQL Workbench it should have been an option so what you want to do is open an existing ERR let's push this over um, actually can't do that um, go to the folder and ignore so this is just a, a view of the database essentially and go back home you're going to create a new connection and uh, let's just name the connection uh, localhost and ok and double click on localhost and this password is the password you gave it uh, when you were installing and like I told you R O O T choose root but if you didn't type whatever you did and then connect and then you're going to file open and then open the schema press the lightning bolt and there will be output down here file open data and just say OK to this press the lightning bolt and there'll be a bunch of output down here and press the refresh button and you should see the Sequila database with a bunch and uh, right click this actor right click and choose select rows limit a thousand and should have 200 entries in this table and don't worry if none of this makes sense as long as it's all working uh, everything is set up um, you can go to this page and refresh this uh, anything that you wanted to do to manage your website, you would do it from here. Uh, you can click on this, you could stop your server, you could restart your server. And if you stop it, you could start it again. You could browse directly to your server. Um, uh, you can change the port of your server here. Uh, lots of options. Um, but from this video, pretty much everything's set up for you. You just have to use it now. I'm Logan Murphy, and I will see you next time.